A new version of the Tesla Model Y is about to go in production at Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Birdland. Let's discuss all the changes and improvements that Tesla is going to make to this new Model Y that we should see later on this year. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Elon Musk recently gave us an update on Twitter as to when we should expect to see a Model Y production from Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Austin. Gigafactory Austin was the context of this response from Elon Musk, and he mentioned that limited production of the Model Y would happen this year, with high volume happening next year. He also followed that up by saying, same with Berlin. The Tesla Model Y is coming out of Gigafactory Austin and Gigafactory Berlin. Although they may look very similar to the Model Y coming out of Fremont, right now, they're going to have some improvements that I'd like to discuss that really make a big difference and make the Model Y an even better vehicle. Let's discuss these differences, starting with the 4680 batteries and the structural battery pack. At battery day, Tesla gave us a sneak peek into how the Model Y structural battery pack would look. In this picture, you can see the front and rear single piece casting and the structural battery pack there in the middle. This particular design allows them to manufacture this part of the vehicle with 370 fewer parts. So if you've been following Tesla over the last year or so, you've probably heard about the structural battery pack and these new 4680 battery cells, but you may not be aware of all the benefits that come with this new technology. So I'd like to dive into why this matters as a consumer and how this improves the Model Y. One of the big reasons that is holding back EV adoption is, of course, the cost of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles generally cost more than the equivalent internal combustion engine vehicle. Although the Model Y is definitely worth the price that Tesla is selling it for right now, it is still quite expensive and out of reach for many people. The long-range all-wheel drive version has a price over $50,000, and the performance version of the Model Y has a price over $60,000. However, at Battery Day, Tesla showed that these new battery cells with all their manufacturing processes and the improvements with the cell and also the structural battery pack would allow them to decrease the price of their batteries per kilowatt hour by around 56%. This, of course, won't happen right away, but it'll take some time for battery production to ramp up. But I believe this is Tesla's target by around 2025, and this is when I believe Tesla will realize this 50 plus percent reduction in the cost per kilowatt hour of their batteries. So eventually with these price reductions in batteries, since the batteries are the most expensive part of an electric vehicle, this should allow Tesla to decrease the price of the Model Y to a point where it's more affordable for more people. So these new 4680 battery cells in the structural battery pack will allow Tesla at some point to lower the price of the Model Y. Just don't expect it to happen all right away because new technology takes a while and these 4680 batteries are not going to be as cheap immediately as they will be in the future when the production ramps up. So yes, these 4680 batteries in the structural battery pack will help solve this problem, but it will take a little time. The second thing that I believe is still holding back EV adoption is the range of an electric vehicle. Now you might say Tesla has plenty of range for most people, and I would agree with that. But the fact remains that for daily use, you should only charge your EV to around an 80% charge. So a 300 mile range EV should be treated more like a 240 to 250 mile range EV. Also, when it comes to really cold weather, there's quite a range loss in cold weather for an electric vehicle. The new heat pumps found in Tesla's vehicles definitely make a difference, but this is still an issue with an electric vehicle. Also, when it comes to driving on the highway above 70 miles per hour, because of the increased wind drag, this definitely decreases the amount of range you also get from an electric vehicle. However, the 4680 batteries and the structural battery pack also solve this problem. As Tesla mentioned at battery day, with this new technology, this should allow for up to a 54% range increase. So while the current version of the long range all wheel drive Model Y has an EPA rated range of 326 miles, if you charge to 80%, you'll have around 261 miles of range. If you take Tesla's current lineup and you just add 54% more range, that could make a long range all wheel drive Model Y have over 500 miles of range, and it could make a performance Model Y have over 460 miles of range. However, I don't believe this is going to be the reality. I don't believe that we're going to immediately see a 500 mile range Model Y coming out of these factories. 
I believe that maybe in three to five years, we will see the range of the Model Y go up to around 400 miles or so, and eventually it could move closer to 500 miles. But instead of pushing the range envelope with the Model Y, I believe once they get close to 400 miles, Tesla is gonna work more on reducing the price of the Model Y and not so much at increasing the range 54%. I believe somewhere around 400 miles would be extremely amazing. And if Tesla got there, that would be totally sufficient. The third big thing that I believe is holding back EV adoption right now is charging time. Although Tesla's charge very quickly, and Tesla has a great supercharging network. And although most charging happens at home, and actually in all reality, an EV is oftentimes more practical and more convenient than a gas burning vehicle because you never have to go to a gas station, for instance, but you charge it up overnight while you're sleeping. The fact remains that the charging time for an EV is still a turnoff for many potential buyers. The current long range all wheel drive Model Y can charge from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge in roughly 22 minutes on a V3 supercharger. According to Tesla's website, in a 15 minute charge, this vehicle can gain around 162 miles of range. Both of these estimates equate out to just over 10 miles of range being added per minute of charging. However, based on what we know about the thermal improvements of these 4680 batteries and also the power characteristics of these batteries, I believe they're going to charge much quicker than the current battery technology. I believe with this new technology that you'll be able to charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge in 15 minutes or less. And this would equate to more like adding 15 miles per minute of charging or even greater. Now there are a couple other changes that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. They're not related to the batteries. But before I dive into those changes that we expect with this new version of the Model Y, coming out of these factories, I wanna address the issue that Tesla will have to deal with, and that's the issue of having an old version of the Model Y, version 1.0, I'll call it, being produced at Gigafactory Fremont, at the same time that they're ramping up production of a Model Y at Gigafactory Austin with a new structural battery pack in the 4680 battery cells. As a customer, when you order a Model Y, you're of course going to probably prefer the version coming out of Gigafactory Austin with these 4680 battery cells, but it'll be confusing if you don't know which vehicle you're getting. So how I see it is Tesla will only produce the long range version of the Model Y at Gigafactory Fremont, and they'll produce the performance version of the Model Y at Gigafactory Austin, and as they ramp that up and prove the technology, eventually they're going to move over all the production of the Model Y, in my opinion, over to Gigafactory Austin, and they'll use the production space the Model Y once took at Gigafactory Fremont and use that for Model 3 production at that facility. So I believe this is likely how Tesla will solve this issue. If you want the new technology, that'll be found in the performance version of the Model Y. If you're fine with a lower price version, that'll be found in the long range Model Y. There's also the possibility that this new Model Y could have some kind of adjustable suspension system, possibly even an air suspension system. Recently on Twitter, Green the Only posted this picture showing that the new updated owner's manual showed a raise and lower icon for the Model 3. He followed it up by saying, quote, I guess add this one as another adjustable suspension is coming for 3Y breadcrumbs. I don't want to say air because I heard there are other options on the table too. And now that it made it to the manual, it's probably sooner rather than later. So Green the Only is definitely a reliable source and he's talked about a lot of features in the past that he's seen in software and code. And these features are often implemented in the vehicles in the future. So I believe this is very reliable and I believe this switch over to the structural battery pack could allow Tesla to have some kind of adjustable suspension on the Model 3 and the Model Y. The last improvement that I believe we'll see with the Model Ys coming out of Gigafactory Austin and Gigafactory Berlin is the fact that I believe Tesla's fit and finish for these vehicles will be much better. The fit and finish of the vehicles coming out of Gigafactory Shanghai have been very good, and I believe we'll see the same thing for the vehicles coming out of these new factories. And I believe this new structural battery pack with the front and rear castings will allow them to have a much better fit and finish. So I guess the question we should ask is, should you wait? If you're wanting to buy a Tesla Model Y, should you wait for the new version to come out of Gigafactory Austin or Gigafactory Berlin before you pull the trigger and buy the Model Y? 
Well, I believe that if you're happy with the range and features of the Model Y now and it fits your needs, then I wouldn't wait. Greatly increased range in the lower cost Model Y will likely not happen for a while, and when it does, it'll happen gradually. If you wait to buy a Model Y until you have the latest version, I believe you'll never get a Tesla because Tesla is always improving and evolving their products. And remember that Teslas are a tech product and there always is going to be a better version coming in the future. The bottom line is the Model Y is already amazing as it is, but it's just going to get better from here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because it helps other people find the video as well. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. Special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.